Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Wall. Today's topic is why does it snow when it's cold but it don't snow when it's hot? Okay, when it snows and it goes up to 70 degrees what would happen? The snow will melt. And what will it turn into? Water. I mean, it don't even have to go up to 70 degrees. It can go up to 50 degrees. The reason why it snows when it's cold, but it don't snow when it's hot. Okay, for an example, if I fill up some water, regardless if it's cold or regardless if it's hot, and I put it in the freezer, and then I wait till tomorrow to get the water out of the freezer, what would it be? Nothing but ice. Snow is actually rain. It's rain that is frozen. That's why it only snows when it's cold, but it don't snow when it's hot. So, here's the thing. I pulled up a couple things on Google and I asked, why does it snow when it's cold, but it don't snow when it's hot? One of them said, and here's what one of them said. The reason is because cold air has less capacity for water vapor than hot air at zero degrees and it says for an example um, air can hold only about one seventh as much water vapor as it can three degrees this length of moisture makes it harder to guarantee guarantee generator much snow the more accurate expression would be that conditions are too stable for snow so it's something about vapor or capacity or something like that and the second one is snow occurs when water vapors in the air freeze freezes before they can turn into water this happens when the clouds is very cold snowflakes are made of crystals of ice that have formed around bits of dirt in the air so again Snow is actually rain, and that's why it snows when it's cold, but it don't snow when it's hot, because, like I said, it's water. Snow is actually water. All right, it is time to get saved. I would like you to go to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means we all have sinned and we all have made mistakes. None of us is perfect. I would like you to go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because we all have sinned, we all deserve to die and go to hell. But don't worry, I got another verse to you, and that is Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God just remembered his own love toward us now. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. He died for me and you, so we don't have to go to hell when we die. But we have to do one thing, though. And I would like you to go to Romans chapter 10 verse 9 through 10 
and we'll jump over to verse 13. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Forever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Once you ask God to come to your heart, you will be saved. Let's get saved right now. Don't wait till next week because there may not be a next week. Alright, let's get saved. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that you died and rose from the dead for me. Please forgive me for my sin and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you just prayed, you are now saved. I would like you to go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. And this is the testimony that God has given us to share our life. Is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of God. You can know that you are saved. It's not a hope so, it's a no so. I'd like you to go to John chapter 10 and verse 28. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither so anyone snatch them out of my hand. I like that verse. No one cannot take you away from God. No one cannot. I would like you to go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me, in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have committed you. And lo, I am with you, always even to the end of the age. Hey. Baptism is the next step after getting saved, and baptism does not get you to heaven. Baptism does not. I would like you to Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 42. Then those who glad received his own word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Go to church and learn about the gospel. I would like you to go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes desire the poor milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I would like you to go to Philippines chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Read your Bible and pray every day. Prayer changes things. One last verse for the day. That is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only God and Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us. He loves me and you. That's all I have. Um, next week's topic is a special event. What is restoration? And with that topic, I'm going to use a Bible. Goodbye, everyone.